Howdy y'all, got the Bulldog on the channel. What we got here, uh, I think I did a video just shortly a bit ago uh, about the uh, ABS wires, but on the front of this truck, it's got transmission cooler lines leaking. And you can get a new line assembly. It's not a huge amount, but there is a cheaper way to fix it. And you do this when you can't wait for parts. I just got back from the OOO store and I got transmission cooler hose. You can see here, transmission oil cooler hose. This is a 5 16 so I've also got some 3 8 right there. I'm not sure which one it is. It should be 3 8 but as soon as I get 3 8 it'll be 5 16 Here's the lines right here. Now, the quick pick is that this crimp right here, you can split, uh, split this clip up the side and you rotate it around, split it again, and I do what's called butterflying it. You open it up and break this thing right up here next to the neck. And you can break that clear off and then you can just pull the hose off and slide a new one on there. Don't get too deep because you'll get into the line. Now, once you get it about there, that's usually enough to allow it to rotate. Rotate it about 180 degrees. Come on. It breaks like that. Now you can open it up. Like I say, butterfly. Work it back and forth a little bit. And it'll break right off. Then you slide the hose off. The fact that it doesn't want to slide off is a good thing, actually, because you don't want it to be easy to slide off. A lot of them will have that crimp right up here, and it'll be crimped into a groove and then they won't have any kind of a barb on this line. You'll have to take your flaring tool and put a little bit of a nipple on the end of it so that your hose just don't blow off. I always just double clamp them anyway. Now that one's got a barb on the end of it. Look at that. That hose ain't gonna go anywhere once I bolt it back on. What I will do is I'm gonna double clamp it, but with all these ribs, at least we don't have to worry about it coming apart. 
I'm going to go ahead and knock all the others off in the same manner, and then we'll start putting it back together. Okay, we got all the hoses off, and you saw that I was being a little ginger with how I was cutting. That was so that I didn't damage the pipe at all. You can see how those things are. They're nice and undamaged. That's that kind of rib that I was telling you about. Right, uh, uh, let me hold it with this hand. Right here, that crimp that goes over the top of it, crimps down there and grabs this so that uh, it can't slide off. But this has some serrations on it right here. The reason that I was being really ginger is that as you're cutting, it's really easy to, once you get through the outer aluminum, it'll just go like butter through that hose. So you'll nick this really easy. You do not want any lengthwise scarring on these things because you'll create a path for transmission fluid to just leak right out of it or whatever you're trying to seal. We're gonna cut some hose and go back together. Okay, we got them all clamped down and installed. As you can see, I double clamp and I put the clamps on opposing sides so that we're not lining up a uh, pinching type deal with the hose underneath there. That's just a leak point asking to happen. I, uh, when I went to get this hose, I stopped by our little Harbor Freight store up there and Got this handy dandy little light for free with my coupon. And I had these clamps. 
So I figured I'd pick up a box of them. They seem to be holding all right. That's another reason why I double clamp is just in case the clamp fails. I've had some of them that were built so darn cheap that you couldn't even tighten them up. These tightened them up, tightened up okay. So we're gonna fire it up and check for leaks. Okay, I run my hand underneath the connections down there. And they seem to be good. All right, now let me tell you the main reason why we're doing this rather than just replacing the whole assembly. Is it cheaper? Yes, it is cheaper. Is it safer? Not really. You always run the risk of blowing a hose off. That's why I was happy to see those serrations. You know, uh, I don't know what they call them. Ribs, serrations, whichever. But when you clamp the clamp down, it squeezes them into that and it keeps the hose from blowing off. Uh, the Chevrolet, like the one I just did here a little bit ago, they don't have those. The way you do that is you clamp something on it and put a nipple on the end of it so that the hose won't blow off. The lines don't cost that much. They really don't. They don't cost any more for this either. But what does cost is the labor to put them on because they run all the way back to the transmission. Oftentimes you have to take the motor mount loose and jack the motor up so you can get room to get them out and back in. The labor is cost prohibitive when you can fix them and have them good as new this way. That's my tips. That's how I do it. If they don't have the serrations, such as on the Chevy truck, I just go ahead and replace the whole line assembly. Can I do it the other way? Yes, I can. Could it cause problems? Yes, it can. Uh, I haven't had it happen yet. Yet. So, that's my deal. Hope this helps out some people. Like, comment, subscribe, hit your little bell notification, share it all around. Talk to you later.